Hello everybody, I'm Roxy and this is Roxy with BS. Okay, so I have a number of things to apologize for. First, this video might be super noisy because I've been trying to record for the whole morning basically and the traffic has sucked. Also, my dog is kind of restless so he might start walking around the apartment and you might hear his paws. And, oh my god, this lighting is just... I left my tripod someplace else and now I only have my computer and I didn't want to not record this today because we are already on day 6 of 2020 or 30 books in 31 days. I have read 5 books so far, I'm on number 6 and I haven't vlogged in the traditional sense just because I feel like I'm not good at it. I only vlog for like really special occasions and it doesn't really feel natural to me. So I'm just doing these wrap-ups of 2020. So four wrap-ups, five books each. I think that's a good number. I have the TBR here and I'm going to link the announcement video for 30 books in 31 days by Ange from Beyond the Pages because I'm going on a trip, month-long trip, on the 24th of December. I felt like I couldn't accomplish 30 books in 31 days, especially because I don't want to carry extra seven books. I want to buy a lot of books there, so I don't want to occupy suitcase space. And that's it. The only book I think I'm carrying is A Clash of Kings and perhaps also Eight Last Tract. I'm going to think about that. Anyways, let's start with the wrap up. This is the important part. The first book I read was Margaret I by Daniel Dutton. This is a fictional memoir of real life historical character Margaret Cavendish, who was a really famous and eccentric author of her time and this was really highly recommended by a lot of people I really admire. It was supposed to really capture the soul of the character and that it does but this book is really bland. I was fascinated at first and then it was sort of meh. I thought it was... I mean the, the events that were narrated seemed to be very interesting but the narrative itself wasn't. I thought if this were told in a different way, and although it's only 160 pages long, I couldn't wait for it to be over. It has its moments of brilliance. That's why I didn't give it a one, I gave it a two stars. But overall, I thought it was really meh that it was a missed opportunity because this woman is so fascinating and it was so well researched. And, you know, the story itself, the source material is so fabulous and fantastic this book really didn't measure up and I was left wondering with what did people see in it that was so great but anyways I think I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this quite honestly which is sad because it's such a pretty book but anyways then for day two I read Me and Kaminsky by Daniel Kelman and I've previously read Daniel Kelman's F and loved it I mean that novel was brilliant but this one was actually better so I said this was about a painter and his pupil, I lied. It was about a journalist who wants to write the biography of this really old painter who was sort of famous back in the day. And so it's just, it has a plot twist. Without being it being a thriller, it has such a good plot twist. Just the way the novel carries out, you can always tell that Daniel Kelman really has a plan with his novels and he carries them well and also although the narrative itself is not that lyrical it's very straightforward the message and just the way the characters come together in this narrative is so good i actually gave this a five out of five i was going to give it a four or four point five but the ending was so good i gave it a five out of five. Oh, sorry that was my phone I highly recommend this, but beware, a lot of people don't like Kelman's books because the characters are so unlikable. The narrator, and which is the journalist, the first person narrative, is unbearably... It's, he's a douchebag. He's like that sort of pretentious guy you meet at parties and you cannot wait to get away from. But the book itself is so good. I'm a firm believer. We need to learn how to read about characters we dislike. As long as they are well written and their stories are compelling, I think this is a must, honestly. Daniel Kelman is so underrated, so please read him, give him a chance. 
give you a chance. Then for day three, read The Lesser Bohemians by Amer McBride. I really love her. She writes in an experimental way. Actually, both of her novels have been nominated for Goldsmith Prize. I did a video about that, so you can check it out there. This is her second novel. It's a little lengthy for an experimental novel, and it's actually a romance book. It's about an 18-year-old girl, Irish girl, who goes to London to study acting and meets a 38-year-old actor, and they fall in love. This is a book that will put you through hell, but ultimately will satisfy you. I think, I mean, I think it could have been more pessimistic, and perhaps I would have liked it more, but it still affected me so profoundly. I just couldn't shake the idea that I was reading something beautiful. Now, here's the catch. A lot of people uh, dislike this because they think it's a challenging book because of the narrative. I mean, I under actually underlined the first line because it's so good. It says, I move. Cars move. Stop. It bends light. City opening itself behind. Here's to be for its life is the bite and would be the start of mine. So you can see what I mean. Everything is told in first person, but there are some digressions also and like some other narratives in there. It is challenging, but actually after the second page I was used to it already because it's so compelling and it's so beautiful. Book number four was Death in Venice by Thomas Mann. Now this is a binder, it has other of his novellas, but I only read Death in Venice. I really liked it. I mean, I can see why Thomas Mann is one of the most important writers ever. It's so beautifully written. But the plot, eh. So this was another one I poorly described. This is not about a painter, it's about a famous writer who goes to Venice and becomes infatuated with what I described as a young man, but he's actually a 14-year-old boy. So I thought there was going to be more like the picture of Dorian Gray meets Brokeback Mountain, but it's actually more like Lolita means quarantine. So the death aspect was introduced in a really poor manner. The romance aspect, although it's not direct because it's, you know, an obsession, that was really well handled. It's really poetic and it's nothing, nothing really happens in case you're wondering. I mean, it's too short. It has some passages that make you think, my, oh my, this is perfection. But it ultimately is unsatisfying. It ends too quickly. The elements are introduced in a really weird fashion. And it was sad because I had high hopes for this one. So I actually have a problem regarding the fifth book. Because one, it wasn't on my TBR. And second, it's not really translated into English. So this is... Le Fight du Prince, it's in French, and this is a Spanish version. Emily Notham is not as widely translated into English as she is to Spanish. I think we have all of her books translated, if not most of them. It started out so well, and you thought, oh my god, she really knows what she's doing, it's so smart, it's so absurd, and it's so great, and then halfway through it was kind of, mm, where is this going, and then by the end it was kind of, mm, it was hard to read, I always find these books hard to read, I gave it 3 out of 5, I think that's more of a 2.5, yeah, it started out so well, so this is about a guy, who one day like hears knocking on his door and lets a stranger in and the stranger makes a call and then drops dead and that's it and then he's like what am I going to do with this and he decides not to call the police and instead take the other guy's identity it was really clever at the beginning and then it sort of fell flat which is sad because it's also short yeah, I, I'm saddened when things start out so well and then they end like... So see you in like five to six days and check out the TBR, check out the announcement video, check out my Instagram because I'm uploading a picture of um, the book every day. So the book I'm reading that day, of course. And so I think some of the pictures have come along quite nice. I hope you like this video. I apologize for all the background noise. I tried my best to like cut it out. Anyways, see you next time. Who, who, the first book I read was Margaret Dutton's 
Daniel Dutton's and they fell in fall 